And you wonder why I tell you to not trust the government? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening guys, wherever you are on this beautiful world, whenever you're watching this video, welcome to the Bitcoin family channel for the newcomers. My name is Didi and yes, I talk about Bitcoin, blockchain and life in today's video. Of course, sharing amazing news articles, some amazing Bitcoin charts and yes, an amazing inspirational quote. Yes, it will be an amazing video. So give the video already a thumbs up now, guys. I'm going to jump into the news first because I want to understand if you still think that you can trust the government. Now, let's jump into that part first. Bam. As a Bitcoiner, you tend to think a little bit more about other things than just uh, the normal thing that you're taught to think about. Why? I don't know. I think more creative people or more people that think for themselves also think about economic systems and also think about everything else. And that's why maybe they are attracted to Bitcoin, also because they love freedom. Now, there is one major event that just happened that all has to do with freedom. Because Mark Zuckerberg from Facebook just admitted three things. So the first thing that Mark Zuckerberg admitted is that the Biden-Harris admin, that they pressured Facebook to censor Americans. You heard it right. That Harris that now is running for president, together with Biden, they pressured Facebook to censor Americans. So the second thing that he admitted is that Facebook censored Americans, which of course is terrible, but they were pressured by the president, by the government, to censor Americans, to not share everything about certain subjects to Americans. That's the second thing and he admitted. And then we have the third thing that he admitted, and that is that Facebook throttled the Hunter Biden laptop story. So even that was put to the back. People should not know the truth about the Hunter Biden laptop story. People should not know the truth about all the pandemic. People should not know all of that. And the American government, Biden-Harris, pressured Facebook to censor all of the subjects on Facebook. So you and I, from the older generation, we are still using Facebook. We were not shown the truth on Facebook because Facebook was pressured by the United States government. Mark Zuckerberg admitting those three things is a very important step in the run for freedom of speech because that was the completely the opposite of freedom of speech. Because whatever we said that we thought that was true about those subjects was not shown on Facebook, that was censored. And now Mark Zuckerberg admitting that and saying we now built a complete different strategy so that we won't ever need to do that anymore is the first step of seeing Mark Zuckerberg turn around. Hopefully seeing Mark Zuckerberg turn around. Maybe he is now realizing, wow, if I don't step up now, they will kill complete freedom of speech. They already arrested Pavel from Telegram. Maybe they're gonna hunt for Elon Musk and maybe they're gonna hunt for Mark Zuckerberg as well in the future if he finally has the balls to make Facebook social media again, not run by the president, not run by the government, not run by anyone else than the community. We should be able to share our opinion publicly, freely, anonymous, whatever way we want on social media. It's just an opinion. There is one thing that my parents taught me when I was young, words don't kill you. It's not the words that will kill you. It's an opinion. Respect everyone's opinion for their opinion, but you don't need to agree with them. And if they yell at you or if they call you names, that doesn't hurt you. That's not like a punch in your face. These are just words. And you interpret those words as something. And you can give them importance or you can say, it's just words. Don't make those words important. And I know it's all part of the divide and conquer strategy of all those centralized entities to make people fight. But as long as we as humans agree that words really don't mean shit, that they don't really hurt, why would we then still be fighting just about words, guys? So it's very important that Mark Zuckerberg just admitted that the government was censoring it. And that's my question to you. I've always been saying, why do you trust the governments? Why do you trust the central banks? Why do you trust all of them? Why don't you step fully into Bitcoin? Why don't you just withdraw all the funds that they have control on? into a system, Bitcoin, 
Bitcoin that you have control on. Why don't you do that? Why do you still keep trusting those governments? Why do you still keep trusting those banks? Why will you still keep money in their accounts if you know they've been fucking you up with inflation, lying, deceiving, censoring about whatever happens in the economy, whatever happens in our world? Why would you still trust them? Let's build our own system on a blockchain proposals, voting, collectively decide how to run our world and what to do with the country that we are living in. And that also combined with a decentralized currency, Bitcoin, that we have control on as a community, not a government that can just limitless start to print money again if they are in problems. They will always print themselves out of problems and print the normal people into problems because of inflation. Why are you still believing those people? Let me know down below. Now let's jump into the more important part, the charts for today. The first chart that we're gonna look into guys is this four hour chart. Look how beautiful that sell signal was on the top. We start to close candles down below the yellow stepping line. When we close them down below that, we knew we needed to end and take our profits guys. Uh, so we took our profits uh, or you opened a short of course when we close the candles down to the yellow stepping line The blue line is down below the white line the white line curling down We can see the red line on top here in the tri-color and then we can also see the yellow and the blue starting when we see this That's the moment for a perfect quadruple confirmation short If you would have taken a short you would know to take some profits around this area 60k because that is the level of support that we are running into. Is this a terrible move for the uh, bullish movement that we are in? No, not really in my opinion. Even in the short term look, we are still, if you would draw a line like this, we are still holding that line a little bit, guys. It's still an upward trend line. Maybe it's a little bit wrong. Maybe we should do it like this so that we can see it's a little bit less steep. Now we're like waking over here, touching here the candy bottles. We wake, wake, wake. So yeah, for me, it's not bearish yet until we break this level support of 60K. Then we can uh, expect a little bit lower prices of 56K, even back to 53K levels. So we need to keep support around this level over here, guys. Um, by the way, if you want to trade all of these signals, go to the bitcoinfamily.com. There you will get a VIP package. And within that VIP package, you will find access to this indicator setup and way more videos, etc. Also guys, below my video, you will find all these links. If you check this link, for example, here, uh, that's the description. In the description, you will find all the important links, guys, to the exchanges, Bybit, to Blowfin, the timestamps, and also all the other stuff over here. You will also find, of course, here, uh, the Bitcoin Signals group, for example, that's on uh, the bitcoinfamily.com. Just click those links and you will automatically go to the website. And it will also be the first comment, always the first comment. I will pin the comment with the most important links, the biggest bonuses, for example, by the 30K. Now, if we zoom out to the five day chart, we see that Gaussian channel again. And we've been talking about the Gaussian channel a lot. And we told each other, if we start to close candles inside of that Gaussian channel, five day candles, that's not very positive. This five day candle again closed outside of that body. You can see that the closing, let me zoom in a little bit, was outside of that Gaussian channel. All of these closed outside of the Gaussian channel. This one is opening inside of the Gaussian channel. If this candle doesn't close in four days and 18 hours above this Gaussian channel level of 60,600, then we have a full body opening and closing within the channel. If that happens, I'm telling you, we will drop back to 53K levels again over here. And if we can't hold that, we will even be able then to drop lower to 46k levels to the bottom. This is not positive. Is this candle going to close within this channel? That's not positive. If we look in the past, into the last couple of bull markets, whenever we closed a candle within this uh, Gaussian channel, it was mostly a very bearish period of 12 months. But there are, of course, always um, exceptions like over here, for example, we close the candle inside the body over there. Then we had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, almost twelve candles, sixty days, two months to be able to break out of that Gaussian channel again. 
So sideways movement again. Here we already have a sideways movement over a very long period, almost six months. We don't want another two months of falling down and more sideways. In the bear market, the moment normally we close the candle inside that Gaussian channel, that's when the bull market is over. Of course, we had a bounce here as well. So there's exceptions because we had this double top bull market. But again, when we closed inside with a full body, that was the start of the bear market. The second confirmation is when it turns from green into red. That's a very negative move. That's the bear market. And it was also in that bull market before. The moment we start to close candles inside that Gaussian channel, that was the start of the bear market. Of course, we had a COVID crash. So there's exceptions, there's always exceptions, but it's not a very bullish sign to start closing candles inside that Gaussian channel, guys. We should try to close this candle above 60,600 in four days, so we have another candle closing above that Gaussian channel. Now, the more interesting chart, that will give you a little bit more of a relaxed feeling, because this is all short-term plays. Five-day charts, guys. Now, for example, over here. This one. This one is very important to understand at the moment because it's exactly how you feel and how I feel at these moments. First of all, when the price goes up, then people and friends and all my followers think I'm a genius because I said the price will go up. And then when the price goes down, my friends and family think I'm an idiot. And then again, the price goes up. And then again, my friends and family think I'm a genius. You will keep running into this circle because your family and friends are emotionally attached to that market and can't handle the pressure of a four-year cycle. They are zooming in and not zooming out. That is what creates these emotions. You're looking at the charts to zoom in. If you want to look at the five-second chart or the one-minute chart, you will have these emotions all day long, a lot of times. If you zoom out, you won't have these emotions anymore because you can see that every four years we have a higher high and a higher low. So these emotions will only be there if you're too zoomed in into the charts. Now, then we have Bitcoin versus the internet adoption. Just to give you an idea where we are. At the moment, we are around 1999 when it comes to internet and the, and the Bitcoin adoption. So where we were with the internet users compared to 1999. And then in 2000, yeah, it was a little bit more. And then it kept growing, growing, growing. But Bitcoin is just very young. The adoption is not there yet. But we are outperforming the internet growth curve. And it's going to be outperforming the internet growth curve way more. More and more people are going to use Bitcoin in the future. But just realize that you're very early. Just think back of 1999 when we still thought that because it became the year 2000, that we would have a collapse of the computer systems. That's how early we were at that time. We are now 25 years almost later. Everything evolved into iPhones, into all kinds of cool stuff that is used by millions and billions of people. This is also going to happen with Bitcoin and blockchain. Then the more important chart for you guys, of course, price charts. Look, the parabolic curve step-like formation, that's where we are focusing on at the moment then. You have a base, you go up, you create another base, sideways movement, you go up, another base, up, up another base, and then you have this sell point, a blow off top. If we look at uh, this chart, we can see the double top of the latest bull market, we can see the bear market bottom being the base over there. It's also a huge cup and handle, as you can see, the cup, and this is then the handle. But if we look at it as this picture over there, then we can see a couple of things. That first of all, my face needs to be somewhere over there. So if you look at these charts, this one is from Gert van Lagen, um, you can see that we have a base, base 2 over there, base 3 over here. They're not a base, and then we should be going here now with a parabolic curve all the way up to 0.5 where we should be selling. I don't believe in 260 to 300k, I believe that you should be selling Somewhere in this area, guys, over there between 120 and 155, 60k, that's, that's my target. Um, but that is how you compare these fractals that we can see on the chart now with this parabolic curve step -like formation over there. If this blue line, this line is now being broken by the Bitcoin price, it's around 73k, that's the validation of wave 5. 
uh, this over here the green line should be the support line 53k so if we fall down once more it will be 253k if we break this level and we fall even down below this level 30k then the invalidation of that wave 5 is completely there so all this area is still a safe area or a bear trap area where bitcoin can even drop to and not be in a bear market we could still then bam recover into a bull market all the way into the end of 2025. So just be prepared for all this volatility. Yes, we could go and create a new autumn high now in 2024, but the top will be somewhere in 2025, towards the end, in my opinion, of 2025. Then we have this chart, and it's of course again a chart that I already showed you of the rational route. This chart is showing you uh, the recovery of two years at the moment. You know, this is the start here, the comparison from the Bitcoin cycle bottom, you know, 16K or 3K or even $200. From there, we start to move up and the recovery in those two years after that bear market bottom, we can see where we are now. We are there. We are outperforming those two other cycles. The strange part is that we already created an all-time high over there after the halving. That is, the dots are the all-time highs. And that, that we outperformed those other cycles tremendously. But now we went sideways for a very long time. We came even near the other uh, cycles. And now we, again we are outperforming those other cycles. So this is a very positive sign. We are outperforming these previous cycles. And then we can look into here, this dollar line, there's a two-year line and 740 days in total is that. We are now in 645 days, so it's another six weeks. In six weeks, that's the month of October, that should be the start of upwards movement. And it could take all the way up to another 1100 to 1200 days. So yes, it's very simple to understand how these cycles work. And could take all the way here to day 11 on the 12th one. So that's another, let's say, 400 days. And that's a year, guys. So from here, it could take another year to reach a bull market top. And that's indeed next year, September, October, November, December, somewhere where I think that the bull market top will be. So just calculate the days. Day 740 is there. We are now at 650. So it will, should be now going up a little bit towards that point, then go up a little bit more steeper for another four or 500 days. That is what is ahead of us. It's a very bullish year ahead of us. Please understand that. Now, then the last chart over here, guys, and of course also now first, did you put your face in the right place? Oh, that's in the right place. That was my luck. Here also showing you again Every time when there is elections, we pump. And now the elections are coming here in November 2024. Towards the elections, we will grow a little bit. And then from those elections, money will be starting to be printed because a new president wants to show off and they want to pump money into the market. And that is what makes Bitcoin go up again because the smart money will move into Bitcoin, not into fiat currencies, into Bitcoin. And that's exactly what your money should be doing now as well, moving into Bitcoin. I hope you made again some profits in the short term volatility of Bitcoin, 64 to 59K. You again got a chance to buy Bitcoin in the 50K range, guys. Amazing opportunities, amazing dips to buy. Short term, beautiful, adding to your portfolio. Long term, we understand what is going on. We just zoom out. We just saw the charts. We know exactly where we are. We know exactly where we're going. We do have 12 months more of bullishness ahead of us. It's not gonna go down to zero from here. It's not going to go into a bear market. 2024 is gonna be a little bit bullish towards the end. Maybe a new autumn high, 80K, 90K. And then again in 2025, we will have that massive run all the way to maybe 160,000 US dollar per Bitcoin, guys. At least that is my target. And you know that there is higher targets, but this is not the end. The charts are showing us, and I believe TA, where we are at the moment, what direction we are going, and where somewhere the end phase will be, guys. 
and it will be in the last part of 2025, a quarter four, in my honest opinion. Now, hopefully you all understand those charts. Hopefully you learn to zoom out in Bitcoin, look at that bigger picture and try to zoom in at life, enjoy every single minute of the day. You should not be zooming into the charts and freaking out about every minute of the day about Bitcoin. Bitcoin is a long-term investment. Look at that bigger picture. Life. Every single minute of the day should be a beautiful minute of the day. You should be focusing on that. Make life beautiful. Bitcoin will do what it always did. It will follow the four-year cycle. It will go up. Don't freak out about that. Freak out about not doing what you love to do every single minute of the day. That's what you should be freaking out about. You should be freaking out to pressure yourself to do every single minute of the day exactly what you want to do. That is what life is about, guys. Now, let's jump into the last part, the inspirational quote. Bam. The inspirational quote for today, guys, is a very simple but very powerful one. Comfort is the enemy of achievement. Whenever you move around in your comfort zone, the level of achievement will be very low. The moment you step outside of your comfort zone, that is when the level of achievement increases tremendously. That is when you start to achieve things in life. Not over here in that comfort zone. That zone that makes you feel very safe and secure because you keep doing the same thing every day again and again and again. That is your comfort zone. If you want to start achieving your goals, follow your passions, follow your dreams, follow your gut feeling, it is the moment you need to step outside of that comfort zone. And stepping outside a comfort zone is one of the hardest tasks in life. And I know this because I comp and I know this because I did this. And not only I did this, my wife did this, my children did that. We stepped completely out of our normal comfort zone. Out of our huisje, boompje, beestje. That's how we call it in the Netherlands. House, garden, baby and a dog, you know. That life, that comfort zone that was taught us that that would be the way to live life, to feel secure, to be happy. That was our comfort zone. We felt very safe. The unknown that we were running towards, the adventure, traveling around the world, selling your house, not owning any assets, not owning any cars, not bringing your children to school, all of that was the unknown. That felt, very, that felt very uncomfortable to step out of this zone into that zone. That was a huge leap. Because we were already 38, my wife and I. So we were already 38 years of being in that comfort zone, living in that comfort zone. To take that step was a huge step. But that step was the most important step ever for our family. If we wouldn't have taken that step, we would still be living in that comfort zone. And now because we took that step, we stepped out of the comfort zone, we started to achieve things in life. Not only financially, but also mentally, physically. We became way more happy as a person, as a family. We started to achieve goals, helping poor people all over the world. We started even to achieve goals financially, becoming richer every four year cycle. We were able to do things that we wouldn't be able to do in that comfort zone. We started to confront ourselves with things that were new to us. But that was the adventure. Our lives changed from a boring, normal life, running the hamster wheel collectively with five, into a very adventurous life of which we still don't know where it will end. It's one big adventure because we were able to step out of our comfort zone. We don't know what tomorrow will happen. We don't know where we will go the next week. Mostly we don't know what will happen the next day. We don't have anything planned. We only know that we will go to Thailand in a couple of weeks. What will happen there, we don't know. And if we take it from there to somewhere else, we don't know. It is still one big adventure. Yes, we are slow traveling nowadays. A Couple of months in Spain, a couple of months in Thailand, maybe a couple of months in South America, maybe a couple of months Australia or Cyprus or Greece, whatever comes to our mind, we take it easy nowadays because the kids and the wife love to travel a little bit more slow. 
Because my pace of traveling is like boop, 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 boop. So we are traveling slowly, but it's all still outside of the comfort zone. The moment we feel very comfortable in Spain and we move again, we are stepping out again. A new adventure. And because we keep doing that, we keep achieving new goals in life. We keep following our dreams. And by that, even living our dreams. Because we achieve the goals in life because we step outside of the comfort zone. So that's the inspirational quote for today. Comfort is the enemy of achievement. If you want to start achieve things in life, step outside of that comfort zone, guys. That was everything for today. I hope you really enjoyed this video again. If you did enjoy the video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends and family, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. What do you think about the charts, about everything else that I talked about? Oh yes, and today I will add a couple of new t-shirts because I saw some comments that people want smaller Bitcoin logos, smaller Bitcoin taxes on the shirt. So from today, there will be a few of these tank tops and normal shirts with a very small text to be or not to be, or a very small text, Bitcoin original. All of those will be available from today in our shop on the bitcoinfamily.com. Thanks for watching. I wish you an amazing day. Sorry I wasn't there yesterday, but I need to handle some stuff, guys. Tomorrow again in the morning, another beautiful Bitcoin video. See you tomorrow. Bam. <music>